All right, which group wants to share out first? What are some things that you heard from your neighbors? Anybody want the mic? What did you hear from your neighbors? Cheryl is always concerned that everyone feels included. So. All right, who wants to share what they heard from their neighbor? So is there anyone else who's concerned about DWIs or driving with a license being revoked? Is that, does anyone else kind of talk about that or have an experience they want to share related to that? Okay. All right. What else did you guys want to share that you heard from your neighbors in terms of, let's go back to the question, I can remind myself, major traffic safety issues. Oh, we talked a little bit about that. Well, I'm a recent FedEx driver. I'm just retired. I'm just set up a little hub and the places so that I see what they're doing and get constantly on their money. Get constantly. And I'm not sure. A lot of times they just don't even know when they're supposed to stop or turn or what. And you said you were a FedEx driver. So yeah, I just Yeah, so it's a. That first hand. Okay. So distracted driving. Anything else that your neighbors kind of talked about that was concerning? Speeding. People are concerned about speeding in your group. Yeah. Are there any particular areas where people are concerned? Any areas of Nash County where maybe you're more concerned than other areas? Sunset Winston. Anybody else notice some bad driving behaviors on Sunset Winston? 301. Okay, so those are some corridors where maybe people are more concerned. All right, next with your group. All right, what are some of the things you would like to change regarding driving behavior? What would you like to change? What would you like to see in, sort, in, in um, regards to changing driving behaviors? So if you'll, I'm going to give you about three minutes and talk with your group about some things that you think need to change related to behaviors. I'm just saying, you're that 
Together. All right, so we're focusing this uh, question on driving behaviors. So, what behaviors would you like to change related to driving? So, what did you guys discuss? What did you and your neighbors, what were they concerned about that they want to change? People just going too fast. People going fast and in a hurry. So the, the court system, so strengthening some of the consequences, or fines. They mentioned something. Okay, so just people being fined more for infractions. Um, I think I think could we break up speeding and being in a hurry? Do you see those as two different behaviors? No. Okay. What else did you guys discuss? Maybe just the speeding? Okay, thinking ahead, right, in terms of the future, is technology going to help change some of our behaviors? And I think I, I, think I read an article about that recently about AI, something about AI in the car, altering our behaviors. So that might be the future. All right, what about your group? Okay, 
Yeah. Okay, maybe start a little bit earlier in terms of the, the conceptual knowledge related to driving. Okay. Which might be help prevent some of these issues. We talked about um, technical devices like cameras set up that don't require a man to sit, sit there monitoring that will automatically take pictures of people who are speeding. Yeah. These people will automatically get a ticket. Yeah. If you go to the vehicle, you're going to get a ticket because your vehicle is observed going it's the, right. the, the law. Right. And you know, it'll start getting people's attention in regards to these cameras sitting around and um it's cost efficient for the police department because you yeah. know, they don't have any cameras um, other than just recording all the data. Yeah. Do we have, do we, would that be building on existing technology? I think we have something similar. Well, there is one. Right 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just making it more wide. Okay. Well, I think that's another issue, uh, too, is when you change behaviors, um, historically, you know, we implement things like, like, you know, fines, right? So are, are we thinking that that is enough, or is that is that enough to change? Because I'm thinking if I have plenty of money, maybe that's not going to impede me, right, from doing what I need to do. I just pay it. Maybe it does impact me. Those fines have to be updated every so every couple of years okay. because the economy is yeah. getting higher. People make more money, so okay. two hundred dollar fine does get a person's attention today, but a five hundred dollar fine would get somebody's attention. Okay. Yeah. 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 Just making sure it's not a system that only, you know, that, that allows people who have the means to escape it, right? So maybe that's another thing to do. It's always to be fair, consistent application of policy regardless of who it is. It's right. not anything other than that discrimination. So yeah. you got to apply it there. Yeah. Yeah. So just making sure that the fines are equitable in terms of what people make, right? Because that's. As prices rise, right, you have to make it a, a consequence, right, a penalty. So, yeah, so just checking on that as well. Okay. I mean, the, the same thing goes with taking life. I don't think anybody else in life is more valuable than mine. Right. So, if you take mine, I may feel really poor. But I, maybe I'm old school, but I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't, I truly really believe that. Yeah. But, but the bottom line is, is that, that, that people know that there's no consequence. They're going to go to jail, but that's a homecoming point because they know everybody in there. Already been in there three or four times. Yeah. So I mean, what's the argument? Yeah. Yeah. So is 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 the threat of jail even changing people's behaviors? Right. Might be another larger question. So okay. Anything else that your neighbors have been talking about related to behaviors? I mentioned public shaming, but I think it's <laughs> yeah, it's public shaming. <laughs> I think yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think technically. Anyone who's charged with certain things, it does have to be public knowledge, but maybe access to public knowledge would be right. Another thing that might help. All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is seatbelts. So in your group, I want you to talk about if you had to guess, what is the percentage of folks using their seatbelts? Have you heard of anyone not using seatbelts? Are there situations where people are refusing to use seatbelts? Um, a lot of fatal crashes involve people not using seatbelts. Um, and so in your group, I'm going to give you about three or four minutes to talk about just the concept of seatbelts. What, what are you hearing about seatbelts? What do you notice about seatbelts? How can we encourage people to use seatbelts? Um, so I'll give you about three or four minutes. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'll give you about another minute, 30 seconds to wrap up. All right, I'm going to start with this group this time. All right, so what did you guys talk about related to seatbelts? Are you seeing any behaviors? Were there some things that you, you know, thought about directly when it came to seatbelts? What did you guys talk about related to seatbelts? There should be a way that you know what I mean? Like something in the car that is so annoying that you're going to kick it out. So some sort of feature in the car itself yeah. that prompts someone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even even going in so far as it won't start if you're not hooked in. Yeah. That important? Do you guys feel it's that important? Well, I told them I had two ladies with FedEx. I didn't have my seatbelt on. I didn't do it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we, we hear stories like that from, from people we know, right? That it wasn't for the seatbelt. Yeah. Okay. Anything else at this table that you guys discussed related to seatbelts? You heard from your neighbors? Okay. So maybe it's a generational thing. Does anybody want to kind of speak to that? Is it a generational thing to not use your seatbelt? Yeah. 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 Do you think people understand that change of that generation? Okay. That just the way that cars are made is different and requires you to be more vigilant about your seatbelt. Okay. So I think there, there are sometimes some specific generational things where we have to tell certain generations a little bit of a different message. I think I heard you say, you're like, I think young people are using their seatbelts, right? 
Um, so yeah, and I know my kids do. Really? So you, you're not seeing it linked to any generation. You're seeing maybe across the spectrum. And then you go off the tricks. Yeah. Oh, there are tricks. <laughs> oh, you can get a medical card to not wear your seatbelt. Wow. Wow. I wish Dr. Moore was here. Let's see your perspective on that, right? Okay. So there's a very tiny population, right, that does have a, a pretty legitimate reason, I guess, not to wear it because the doctor's only off on it, but. Yeah. Yeah. They do? They do? Yeah. Do you guys see people ever use pet the, the pet seat belts in your experience? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So parents. That's sort of a population that we could really speak to because I'm sure there, there have been some, some accidents and kids. Yeah, educating parents, yeah, about buckling kids in. I, proper car seats. Right. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that might contribute to some of the fatalities and, and serious injuries that we see in young people, right? Like the kids not being, and like you said, it doesn't matter how fast you're going sometimes, right? It's just when you don't weigh a lot, it doesn't take much, right? Do you guys think that maybe location, does that play a role? Because I know, like, some of the time down in rural areas, the stigmas of females and things like that versus being in the city. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've heard people that are like, oh, I'm just running up the road, right? You know, so it's not a big deal. You know, I'm just running to grandma's house or whatever, right? Um, I've heard people say that. Yeah. 
So some of that experiential learning, having students do, do like a simulation or an experience that mimics the reality can, can change the day.
by your neighbors about impaired driving. So what sort of impaired driving are you seeing? Are you familiar with? Have you heard about? How do we change this behavior? So what did you guys discuss in your group? That's concerning. Had to figure out how to change the behavior, yet. There's just not one solution. Yeah. 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 So impaired driving is obviously a very complex. It's, it's just every case is not going to fit into one neat definition, right? So, so which one do you think we can tackle? I guess in terms of behavior. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Within the will, there's a way, right? <laughs> but there is there is the possibility and the potential for car manufacturers to start integrating some of those safety features. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Right. Yep. Which is a good idea, right, at the beginning. But yes, where there's a will, there's a way. It's an addiction for a reason. People are desperate, right? And when you're desperate, those are the things that you, that you do, right? Right. I'm a brain. How do we? How do we change people's behavior when it comes to things like alcohol, you know, narcotics? What's the solution? Early education. Okay, continuing to educate the public. <laughs> yeah. drive to the store to get it, and then I don't really know where you're driving back if you're going east, right? Being impaired, I mean. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. But even even taking the CRE out of it, all they have to do is have that field sobriety test and be able to present themselves in front of a magistrate and they are they have articulate that this is what his driving was, the reason why I heard it, and then let the court decide. Yeah. But I think and I am still sworn, so I'm not not putting any law enforcement officer in a bad light, but we get to the point of you know, I stop alcohol, so yeah. here we go. I, I, there's nothing else I can do. I don't yeah. stop alcohol, so uh, that must not be the case. Yeah, the so impairment is the issue, not necessarily the source at that point. And now you don't have to prove the smell. So now there is a open door for you if you smell it. I know I'm physically smell. It's not that the, the smell that everywhere we go. Yeah. And Yes. Yeah. And I think Dr. Moore made a great point too about prescription drugs as well. Making sure we're educating people about prescription drugs. in the air that could impair someone. So, yeah, for alcohol. So that one was specific. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So car manufacturers sort of taking the lead on that. Do you think there is public pressure 
for, for car manufacturers to step up and have more safety features? No. All right, last question before we just open the floor to general feedback. All right, if you could make one change to make traffic safety better in your community, what would it be? So if you specifically, just you, could make one change for your community, what would it be? And I'll give you guys about three minutes to discuss.
talking in small groups, but in a bigger group, is there any concern that someone wants to share that was not addressed in a question that Mark and I asked? Okay. Sure. If nobody wants to add anything, we can definitely report out. Yes. 
somebody would report out on some of the things we discussed? Another thing that I see uh, in the city hall is that uh, the I don't know what they should say, teach now and driving or when you go to get your license because, like, um, you know, like a lot of people don't know you're supposed to stay to the right yeah. in, in an intersection. Yeah. Or get in the first one. I mean, it's yeah. just like they're so dense and they don't even know that they're about to cause an accident. Yeah. So I don't know if it's being taught anymore. Yeah. I, yeah, I think driver's education is always a big one. I know uh, for me, my teenagers got caught in that, that COVID where it was like, you, you, have, you got to do it for six months and now it's nine months sort of situation. But yeah, maybe there will be some data that comes from that that will, will show the impact on the longer or the shorter time period. But I know we have a pretty robust and complex driver education program. But There's a lot of data that shows the longer you learn, you are learning just issues with safety. One of the big ones was uh, driving while impaired and also on a restricted license, um, distracted driving, and speeding. People also uh, indicated 301 is a big um, issue in terms of speeding. People were also concerned about um, traffic safety on uh, Winstead, I believe, and Sunset. Those were the two big areas. Um, that, that people were concerned about related to just speeding, reckless driving, uh, safety issues. Does anybody in one of the groups want to share anything specific from that? I think we captured everything. Mm-hmm. All right, so the next question was about behavior changes. So some of the things that, that the groups thought would really change people's behavior was larger fines for speeding overall. So maybe the fines aren't um, enough to warrant someone to change their behavior. It doesn't sort of impact their wallet enough, rather. Um, Another one is just investing in technology, like speed cameras, more speed cameras. Yes, some some technology in the car as well. So thinking about how car manufacturers can put um, technology in the car to help people change their behaviors. And then uh, young drivers education, just, just making sure that we get to kids younger. So we don't have to wait till they're 14 to talk about safety. We can talk about that earlier and earlier so that by the time they get to 14 and they actually think about driving, they're well prepared and knowledgeable. So did I hit everything there that we all talked about? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, is this a continuation of the other one? This is the Oh, this is the seatbelt one. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yep. Okay. So in terms of seatbelts, we talked a lot about seatbelts, um, and a lot of it uh, was related to how can there be a feature in the car to influence people to use seatbelts. So, um, so for instance, maybe the car doesn't start until it's buckled. Maybe it needs to be something that drastic. Um, more reminders in the car. More frequent reminders um, so that, that people know how important it is. One of the things we brought up is, is it generational? There were some folks who saw people across the spectrum without seatbelts, but there were, there were others who uh, knew that there were people, older people who were used to very sort of solid, heavy cars, and it wasn't as much of a concern about getting into an accident um, because modern cars are built differently and therefore it warrants another level of safety, like seatbelts and airbags. So is there some generational education that needs to happen? Everyone was very concerned about car seats educating parents to make sure that the car seats are in the car correctly, um, that it is buckled in and secured, um, and you know that kids have the right size, so that there's not a one-year-old in the seat, for example. So helping parents make the right choices about car seats. And then the last one is how can we incentivize seatbelts? How can we have partnerships with auto manufacturers and insurance companies 
to help them also incentivize people uh, continuing to use their seat belts. So, did I hit everything there? All right, impaired driving. Everyone really talked about how it's not just drunk driving anymore. It's, it's, it's pill, marijuana, uh, I mean, huffing paint. There are a whole host of things that are impairing people's driving now. So it's, it's, it has changed significantly, and because of that spectrum, it looks a little different. And so we also talked about the, the DREs, the, the officers who can recognize drugs, and how maybe we need more of those, or we need a better process in order to identify um, the substances that, that are impairing people. We also talked about early education um, with, with kids understanding all the types of things that impair you as a driver. Also more training for officers or anybody involved in highway safety related to impaired driving. And then safety features in the car. So um, it was mentioned that, that an auto manufacturer had one that could sense alcohol in the air, for example. And so that might be the future of impaired, uh, fighting impaired driving um, is just enhanced safety features in the car. And then our last, did I capture everything well? All right, and then what are some things that we would want to change? What is one change that we would like to see? First of all, um, more targeted cell phone laws. So laws that actually reflect the things that people are doing that is impairing them, like texting, for example. Um, uh, enforcement efforts, making sure that we are enforcing the laws that exist, so working with the DA so that the DA understands that speeding is a severe issue, it's a, it's a safety issue, and that people do need to be uh, convicted in the appropriate way to reflect how serious that issue is. And then thinking about driver's education standards, and I think that harkens back to earlier where can we start earlier with educating kids? Can we start at 12, 13? Right, and talk to them about highway safety as opposed to waiting until they're 14 and they're getting ready to drive. So, so does anybody else have anything they want to add from Mr. Groups? Okay. Now, they could possibly uh, do uh, continuing education courses for people at, uh, after I have license. Yeah. Because the law has changed, and um, you know, I know that if you're a builder, you have to. Yeah. You know, one thirty five years probably be cost effective to yeah. do uh, yeah. Well we talked about fines as a consequence, but maybe education yeah. as well, right? Be educated on the laws, right? Do they need to go through some sort of continuing education course, right? Because that fits in nicely. All right. Great, thank you, Holland. We'll talk very briefly about some of the things that we came up with in our breakout group. We had 10 folks in our breakout group. Can you all raise your hands who were part of that crowd? Thank you all. It was a small, tiny group. So I'm going to summarize very briefly some of the things that we talked about. And for those of you who were in the group, chime in if I miss anything. So a couple of top issues that we talked about were one is the issue of distracted driving. That, that is uh, certainly an issue of cell phone use, but it's not simply cell phone use. There's a lot of emotional distraction. There's uh, a lot of uh, technology in cars now that can conversely be distracting, just like it in some respects can be helpful if you're distracted as well. Uh, one issue, increasing uh, traffic due to development and through traffic, uh, speeding, of course, uh, through highways and residential areas. Rocky Mountain Ash County is an area with a lot of highways, but also increasing, uh, increasing population. Uh, some of the new infrastructure, folks felt like that is useful, but confusing, especially roundabouts are fairly recent. Uh, feature here in Rocky Mountain, so some folks still are learning how to use them, uh, and there could be some uh, uh, use there that uh, sometimes folks are driving in places where they're not intended to drive, like bike lanes, uh, getting accustomed to new traffic patterns is not uncommon as a problem in new areas and especially areas that are increasing in population, they can still be frustrating. And 
And so we had some folks who were planners in our group who talked about uh, the ability to reach out to town engineers when you had issues in your particular neighborhood. Uh, crash mapping, some of the engineers and some of the planners were talking about the presence of crash maps uh, on the uh, area MPO site. There's uh, crash mapping that's already been done to tell you where some of the crashes have occurred in the area. And uh, also, we talked about the issue of motorcyclists uh, driving recklessly and the dangers of motorcycle use. Anything to add to that as we talked about major issues for the rest of the group? Did that summarize it fairly well? All right, so we asked the question, what behaviors would you like to see changed? One of the big ones was uh, just respectful road behavior. You know, you got to respect the fact that you're not the only person on the road. Uh, education about traffic laws, it needs to be something that's ongoing. Much as the first group mentioned, it's something that we just can't teach when kids are 14 and 15 and 16. It's got to be ongoing education. Um, many people have never been licensed or received that driver's education in the first place. We talked about the problem of impaired driving. Uh, not only uh, the presence of some bars and breweries, but the fact that a lot of the arrests that we're seeing aren't folks necessarily coming out of those places. It's coming out of house parties or drinking at home or drinking alone. We even talked about the fact that people are getting drunk in the evening, waking up in the morning still more drunk than they should be and driving to work at 7 or 8 o'clock. Uh, well, in substance use, uh, the state highway patrol, as I mentioned, are seeing folks not just so much coming home from bars, but also driving at homes. Uh, and the fact that people are not reporting uh, crashes or impaired driving incidences as often as they should, sometimes because of fear and misunderstanding. There was also a concern that the consequences don't always fit the severity of violations, especially around impaired driving and driving Anything else that I've missed around that? Okay. And then we ask, how can we address issues, especially around uh, impaired driving? There has to be community-based uh, education and initiatives. We talked about the new technology, such as the passive alcohol sensors that are coming into cars. That really has a lot of potential. The problem is, if you put them in today, 2025, what would that be, a 2025 model, it may be 20 years before that becomes standard technology in automobiles because we tend to drive cars that are 10 to 12 years old and we tend to only change them every 10 to 12 years. So. But nevertheless, it's a step in the right direction. We asked about seatbelt. He said, uh, uh, we oftentimes, when we ask this question about seatbelt use, a lot of residents think the number of people using seatbelts is actually smaller than the percentage. But in Nash County, you see about 90 to 92% of people using seatbelts. So that's a good sign. The downside is people who are unbelted, who are in cars, uh, often make up between 45 to 50%. So, still got a lot of issues to, to go that way. Too many cars on the highways, uh, and the problem, of course, of building more highways is that they tend to fill up, and then you got to build more, and that's another issue as well. We talked about alternative routes of transportation, uh, additional bike lanes, the presence of some existing uh, alternative transportation routes. We talked about car road transit some of the things that you've got here in Rocky Mountain for alternative transit. Rocky Mountain's also recently got a uh, strip, uh, Safe Streets for All planning grant. Safe Streets for All is a federal pot of money that allows for cities to plan comprehensive and innovative traffic solutions and use that money in real flexible ways. So Rocky Mountain's been given uh, one of those planning grants, which is great. Uh, also, it's not a, a town, Rocky Mountain's not a place that necessarily has a real 
a real strong center downtown, so it's a little suburban, and so that makes the traffic issues a little bit interesting. There's not as much congestion as you may see in other places. We talked a little bit about pedestrian safety and the need for, uh, uh, for to address that, and the fact that we're seeing that those kind of deaths increase in North Carolina. Uh, we talked about some of the infrastructure issues there and also some of the pedestrian behavior issues and also mental health issues as that can impact traffic safety. Is there anything that I missed there? Okay, so those were some of the main points. So, thank you all. Well, any other breakout groups? Just those two? Great, so as, as we wrap up, and we've only got about five minutes, and so I'll, I'll wrap up very quickly. The question always is, well, what do we do next? We came here, we had this great discussion, what do we do next? So, there's several things that citizens in Nash County can do to address this task. One is we had somebody here, it was you, with the safe street, uh, talking about safe streets for all. There will be planning groups that will uh, be occurring in Rocky Mountain throughout the county around how to address safe streets for all. So have you got any ideas when those will happen yet or are they planned? So still in the planning stages, but there will be some public uh, planning that will be announced at a, at a later time, fairly, fairly soon. Uh, in addition to that, that's going to so that's going to be a strong opportunity for anybody here for Nash County and for the right County area to be involved in the planning. The second thing that we see a lot of communities do is they put together what we call the Vision Zero community. I talked earlier about how that safe streets for all, and I mean, how that the safe system approach has made a difference in airlines. We think that it could really be incorporated in uh, traffic safety. And so, a number of local community groups called Vision Zero communities are popping up, where it's basically citizens interested in implementing changes, both structural and behavioral, to address traffic safety. So we urge you all to consider becoming a Vision Zero community. And we urge you to keep these conversations going. What we're going to do is email these notes to everybody who participated. I think everybody has been on the sign-in sheet. I hope, hope you have. If you haven't, please sign in. And we will follow up with you, provide those notes, and we will help in any way we can in facilitating future meetings if the group wants to continue these discussions. What we can't do is actually, you know, that's got to come from you guys. It's got to come from the bottom up. But we will help in any way possible to facilitate that. We don't want this to just be a one-off discussion. So I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank Holly and our other facilitators. I definitely want to thank the good folks who have helped us uh, provide this food, uh, the law enforcement agencies across here who have helped with that, who are present today, and the good folks here at Nash Community College for giving us this wonderful facility for this discussion tonight. Thank you all very much, and please have a safe trip back home.